This week, I started to work with the book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And let me tell you, it already had such a huge impact on me. And I will also tell you a little bit about the things that I realized and learned while working with it. While I am telling you about how it helped me and what I discovered, you can either watch me fill a spread with drawings I found on Pinterest or draw along while listening. With this spread, I wanted to improve how I draw clothes, so I look for references on Pinterest. And as always, I will leave you the link to my Pinterest in the description down below. For my materials, I used a ballpoint pen that I got for free at an event, so please don't ask me for the brand, I actually don't know. And for the colors, I used highlighters and I will leave you the name of those in the description. But now, let's dive into today's topic. I felt very blocked for a very long time by now. Every time I wanted to draw for fun, I felt the fear crawling outside of my corners of my mind and I was just so afraid of not coming up with ideas of what to draw. So I tried to find ways around it and if you're interested in those, I also have a video about my techniques, how I come up with ideas. I tried to be prepared with ideas before opening my sketchbooks and even though I knew that after years and years of drawing, it is normal to not come up with what to draw within a second. A second still felt like forever to me and I was just being more and more intimidated by that second. The blank page would stare at me and make me so afraid. Some days it was worse than on others and in my pushing through art blog video I was confronted with this more than usual and you can see me trying to push through it but kind of failing doing that. The fear is just always there and it keeps me from having fun exploring the empty page, it keeps me from drawing and doodling in my sketchbook, it keeps me from so many things. I knew I had to do something about it and then Apple Cheeks uploaded the video of her first week working with The Artist's Way and I was so intrigued. If you don't know Apple Cheeks, I would really recommend you to check her out. I just love her videos. They are so calming and relaxing, so go check her out. I watched the second video as soon as she uploaded it and I was so impressed and I felt the hope coming up inside of me that it may help me with my blogs, so I immediately ordered it to my local bookstore. I will be in week two by the time this video will be online. It is now Saturday and I started to work on it on Monday, which means I only have tomorrow where I have to do the recap. So I can pretty much tell you that week one was already so enlightening for me. It helped me to finally accept something that I had lurking in the back of my mind all the time, because actually I don't think that my art blogs were art blogs all the time. Instead, I think that my issue lies deeper than a block that an artist has to face every now and then because art blocks are normal, but this isn't. I have a very unhealthy mindset when it comes to my art and especially the expectations that I have. Don't get me wrong, I am not saying that I didn't have an art block, I think I had, but I also learned that my thinking may have provoked it to hit me that many times in the first place. When I look back at my sketchbook, I always flip through them thinking, wow, I was so much better then and I was so free and creative. When in reality, I know I hated what I was doing. I know I was struggling with filling these books because I wanted to come up with original ideas. And I know I was rarely satisfied with what I ended up drawing. This got better over time, but the fear still stayed and didn't go away. I always thought, that by improving, I will reach a point where the fear isn't an issue anymore. But guess what? The fear didn't move and I still had to struggle with it, even though I improved a lot. I expected so much more from myself and maybe I also expected way too much. Of course, there were spreads that I loved and weeks where I felt so proud about my art. It was not that I was always so depressed about my art, but even those periods didn't last too long. By doing my morning pages, I realized that I couldn't wait for my art blog to go away. I had to change my mindset because I felt the pressure that I put on myself with every character, every sketch and every single stroke that I made. But why did I pressure myself so much in the first place? I know that there are many people surrounding me that I don't want to disappoint, but I am the one who expects this all from me. For example, with my portfolio project. 
I wanted to finish one character every second week while I was struggling with these fears. I also wanted to still work in my sketchbook, I wanted to have hobbies, I wanted to read, watch TV, and there is no way that I would be able to juggle all of this without losing something. Of course I couldn't meet these unrealistic standards that I set myself, but instead of changing my deadlines and loosen up a little bit, I was disappointed or even mad at myself for not living up to my expectations. I told myself things like, you will never be able to do this for a living if you can't even do your portfolio the way you planned it. So I pushed myself even more and by doing that the fear grew and grew and the art block I was facing turned into a wall. I felt locked out from my creative self. I tried to break into it by pushing myself more and more but I ended up facing a wall. Obviously that only made it worse. One of the assignments I would even go so far and say the most important one is to do morning pages first thing in the morning. That means you have to write down three pages full of thoughts, no pressure, no limitations. There's only one rule, just write. Whatever comes to mind, just write it down and so I did. I wrote page after page and with every sentence I realized that I need to get rid of the pressure on my shoulders. I am the only one who can throw it off because I am the only one who put it on in the first place. I started to reflect on what exactly led me to put so much pressure on myself. It was the fact that I disappointed myself over and over by not meeting my standards or in this case, for example, deadlines that I set myself. I tried to focus on everything at the same time and if someone told me to be more realistic and healthy with my personal goals, I just nodded and thought to myself that I had to do it this way. I have a lot of things on my plate and because of everything that I have to get done through the week, I am a naturally organized person because otherwise I couldn't fit everything into a day. The first time I realized that I needed to change the way I was working was when it happened more and more that my daily plans and timelines wouldn't fit into one day. A day only had 24 hours and I still wanted to get a good amount of sleep because I know I am not working very well when I am tired. My disappointment grew with every deadline that I missed. And with that, my fear of starting and failing also grew. But this week, I changed something. I told myself that I don't need to do any of the things that I'm doing. I am doing them because I want to. There is no need in forcing myself into deadlines when I am not working full time. I know I was so afraid of not being able to work professionally if I'm struggling with deadlines in my personal life, but... I had my first job in the gaming industry for character art and I'm very proud to say that I met every single deadline so I know that it is different as soon as you do this for money or professionally. I will now try to set realistic standards for myself that won't burn me out to the core so I told myself to take a break from working on my portfolio because also the quality of the pieces that I made got worse and worse because I was so used to feeling disappointment and because of that I put way too much pressure on my shoulders again. This week instead I only focused on what I wanted to draw when I felt like it. I think I still ended up drawing every single day because I wanted to. I even drew till 3am in the morning because I was so in the zone and I was just having fun with my sketchbook. Another assignment in the chapter was to write down affirmations. If you don't know what affirmations are, you basically have to write down positive thoughts about yourself. For example, you have to write, I am a good artist. I am a creative person. The assignment was not only to write down the positive things, but also the negative blurts that appear while writing these positive affirmations. For example, if you write down, I am a good artist and you think to yourself, Oh, but there are so many better artists out there. Then you have to turn that into a positive affirmation. But I also learned something new about the source of my fears just because I did this assignment. I am so impressed by this book so far and even though I'm only done with the first week. I went into this drawing session you can see in the video without any fear and expectations. I even messed up one of the sketches and I didn't care too much. And also this is the perfect time to mention that I forgot to press record before I started that drawing that I messed up. So I accidentally skipped this whole part. I made myself another cup of tea and when I picked up the pencil again, I just forgot to click on the record button. So excuse me, I'm sorry for that. I know that coming up with my own stuff will probably still make me feel more afraid. But for now I am having fun with trying things learning and just sketching. 
and I am so excited for the next 11 weeks. And I just hope that this book will help me with feeling safe and having a healthy mindset. And also by having a healthy mindset, I hope I will be able to access my creativity again. I feel so relieved. And even looking back at the last couple of weeks, I honestly don't know why I pushed myself so much and how I was able to work with that pressure on myself. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was why there is no video about this month. I asked you guys at the beginning of July if you wanted one or two videos about this month in which I wanted to be productive and push through my portfolio. But there are two main reasons why I didn't end up recording anything or making a video. The first one, I wasn't as productive as I wanted to be. And the second one is, I am so bad at vlogging. Like seriously, I told myself that I would record the updates tomorrow and then I moved it again and again and again. You won't believe how many times I recorded the beginning of the day and then nothing else. I have so much footage of me talking to the camera what I want to do today and then I stopped recording. I just forgot. But I still hope that I will get used to it because I really love those kinds of videos. And while we are at it, I wanted to ask you guys what you think about those videos. I will also ask this in another community post, but are you even interested in vlog style videos? I already have a couple of more behind the scenes videos on my channel and even though I love doing them, they are also more work and it would be nice to know if you'd even be interested in them in the first place. So please let me know in the comments. Also, I wanted to say thank you to every one of you. I uploaded my first sketchbook tour video almost four months ago, in two days exactly four months ago, and I am so overwhelmed by all the love and support. I just wanted to say thank you so much. Now about the sketchbook spread. As I mentioned, I messed up one sketch, the one of the girl that is standing on the right page of the spread that I also forgot to record. Her face is just wrong, it looks terrible. First I wanted to fix it, you can also see some post-its with fixed versions, but then I was like, whatever, it's just a sketch of my sketchbook, so I left it, which also shows you the impact this week had on me. But I love the way the other sketches turned out, because look at the shading of the cowgirl, I just love it, it's with highlighter again, and I love the way she turned out. Also the portrait of the guy, he just looks so unique and cool and I love the expression, and also the fact that I also used grey as the photo makes me also quite happy. I think that was a good decision to go with a grey. My focus on this page was to get a better understanding of clothes and the way fabric moves. And I definitely learned something. But most importantly, I had a lot of fun. Thanks again to this book that I'm reading. I was also watching one of my comfort movies while drawing. Those of you who watched a couple of my other videos may already know that I love books and I love reading. The movie that I watched was the third part of a movie series that is based on a German trilogy. And the trilogy is about time travel, but I love it for the comforting effect it has on me. Also, fun fact, parts of the movies were shot at the school that I went to as a child. So watching it also has a very nostalgic effect on me. I just looked it up and I saw that there are English versions of the book and the first one is called Ruby Red by Kerstin Gear. So if you are a fan of young adult fantasy books, then I would recommend it to you. But keep in mind, it is a young adult fantasy book. And I know that there are flaws in both of the endings, the one in the last book and also the movie adaption because they changed the ending. But I still love that series for the comforting effect. Sometimes I just love to watch movies or read books for the nostalgic effect that they have on me. Also, I love trashy Christmas movies. <laughs> but before talking too much about books or movies, I will end the video here. As always, I hope you took something out of this video and I will see you next week. Thank you.